Thank you for joining me on the journey. This is Completed Christianity. So, welcome back once again. Next episode of Being Complete. And today is Shabbat. And we continue on with our validation of the law commentary. And today we continue talking about Galatians, our reading through of Galatians, and how that the law is established by the book of Galatians. What we're typically taught about the book of Galatians is doctrines and traditions of men that want to do away with the authority of the Father through his law. And so let's, let's jump in and look into this today. And we are here, I believe we finished with verse 13 last time. And he's talking about in verse 13 that the law, the Torah, that it was there was the this curse of the Torah and that Messiah became this curse for us. So this curse of the Torah is basically that it requires our death. Messiah paid that death for us. So now we walk in a newness of life, free from the law. Not keeping the law, but free from the law's power over us in that it could sentence us, cause us to be sentenced to its punishments, to death, because we broke it. So, if you're not a law keeper, then you're a law breaker, and and you and you have the potential to fall away, to to fall from grace, this grace that is given through Messiah, that He paid this price for us. So, start reading here. So, cursed is everyone who hangs upon a tree, in order that the blessing might come upon the nations in Messiah Yeshua, and to receive the promise of the Spirit through belief. So, most of the rest of this chapter is about this verse right here, verse 14. So the deal is, is that that there's this promise of the Spirit through belief. And that that promise is the, is the favor that was given to Abraham. And so that through Messiah, that it might come upon the nations. So this belief that it would come carries through in basically the rest of these verses, which are very difficult verses because we have been taught the error of these doctrines and traditions of men. So brothers, as I say it, brothers, as a man I say it, a covenant, even though it is man's, yet if it is confirmed, no one sets it aside or adds to it. So this is kind of a smoking gun verse right here. And because we're taught old covenant, new covenant, old covenant, old, done away with, passed away, finished, no longer applicable, not for us. So that's what we're taught. New Okay, that's fine. But this, he says, even though it's a man's, even though it is a man's covenant. So he's saying, even if a man makes a covenant, that no one sets it aside or adds to it. The point is, even more, when the father makes a covenant, no one sets it aside or adds to it. But the thing is, is where this has been set aside and added to it, it's been set aside by evil men. And it has been taught to sincere and seeking men by evil men. And so that's taught as truth. And centuries later, we don't know that, that what is taught as truth is actually taught 
by evil men that separated themselves from the ways of the Father, from the ways of Yah. So no one sets it aside or adds to it. So the covenant's not old. And, that, and we're, the old covenant that we talk about being old is the Mosaic covenant, which is what was given through Moses. But the promised covenant is the Abrahamic covenant, which is even older than the old covenant. So this is, this is what Paul's getting at. These covenants don't go away. They're just layers Kind of like as one man has said, transparencies upon top of each other, each one revealing more and more of what's going on. I mean, more and more of the mysteries, more and more of the mind of the Father. But the promises were spoken to Abraham and to his seed. He does not say unto seeds as of many, but as of one and to your seed who is Messiah. So these promises, they're spoken to Abraham and given to his seed, the singular seed, which is the Messiah. These promises were given to the Messiah, and the Messiah would then bring about a belief, a faith, that would deliver the people from the bondage of sin. Now this I say, Torah, the law, that came 430 years later, which is the law of Moses, 430 years after Abraham, that came 430 years later, does not annul a covenant previously confirmed by the Mighty One in Messiah as to do away with the promise. So, what Paul's saying falls the same for the Mosaic Covenant. The New Covenant, it doesn't annul the what we call Old Covenant, the Mosaic Covenant. The Mosaic Covenant doesn't annul the Abrahamic Covenant, covenant just like the Abrahamic Covenant didn't annul the Edenic Covenant. It, it's just layers upon layers with more of the story revealed every time. As it is said that the, the new covenant is the old covenant revealed. The quote old covenant is the new covenant concealed. So, for the inheritance, for if the inheritance is by Torah, if the inheritance is by law, it is no longer by promise. But the mighty one gave it to Abraham through a promise. So the inheritance that that we would receive life, that we would receive everlasting life, that we would receive um, that through Abraham and Abraham would receive many, many descendants, many, many people. We are adopted as it's going to say, I think in the next chapter, that we are adopted into this. And so, so this is inheritance. If it was by the law, then it's no longer by promise. So this, the, the law bringing the inheritance is just not the function of the law. It's not that the law is bad. It's not that the law is done away with. It's just not the function. So why then the law? He's going to tell us. And this is typically used as like a smoking gun verse for the law abolishing crowd to say, see, you know, the law was until Messiah came. But that's not what the intent is here. Why then the law, the Torah, it was added because of transgressions until the seed should come to whom the promise was made. So it was added because of transgressions. So the transgressions were taking place. So the law is added because of these transgressions to show that these are transgressions. These are sin. So the, so the law says, hey, these things are bad. Don't do these things. And if you do, this is the consequence. If you do, then you're guilty of all of them and you're going to die. So, 
So that's the that's the case until the seed comes. That when you break these things, you're gonna die. <clears throat> so it's added because of transgressions to make them known that these things are gonna kill you. But now that the seed comes, they're gonna kill you until the seed comes. So when the seed comes, Messiah, and you've put on Messiah, you're in him, belief in him, belief in the atoning work that he did, then, now, it's no longer going to kill you. The, the punishment is done away with because the punishment has been paid in Messiah. So what he's getting at here, he's not, he's not just with one stroke of the pen canceling the Father's law. He doesn't have the authority to do that. So this is what's going on here, that the law was added because of these transgressions to say that you're, the transgression, it's going to kill you if you do it. It's going to cause your death but in the the seed is going to make you alive it's not going to allow the punishment to come to you but then like paul says after we've received that now we walk out our salvation in fear and trembling and we do that by keeping the father's ways by keeping the father's laws <clears throat> It's not, you're, we're not delivered to sin, we're delivered from sin. So when we're delivered from sin, then we, when we are given the power through the Spirit, the power to, to walk out and overcome sin through the power of the Spirit and not be bogged down in sin. John says, 1 John, that that sin is transgression of the law, this law, the Mosaic law. So sin is what is contrary to the Mosaic law. <clears throat> so, until the seed should come, to whom the promise was made, and it was ordained through messengers in the hand of a mediator, other versions say ordained through angels in the hand of a mediator. So this mediator, the mediator, however, is not of one, but the mighty one is one. So this mediator that was going to come between us and the punishments that the law, uh, that the law prescribed, this mediator is the Messiah. So he is getting in the middle of that. And the law says death, but through him, he gives us life because in him we are made as he was born without sin. The Torah, is the Torah then against the promises of the mighty one? Let it not be. For if a Torah had been given that was able to make alive truly righteousness would have been by the Torah, by the law. So the Torah, it led to death because it said, do this or die. Um, Messiah leads to life because in him, the faith in him says we have life. And so the Torah is not able to bleed for us. There's no remission of sin without the shedding of blood. Well, he, and he actually is the Torah. He is the word made flesh. The Torah is the word. So he's the Torah made flesh. So this, this law actually becomes flesh and does bleed. But the actual letter of the law, it can't bleed for you. So it can't make you alive. It can only cause your death. That's why it's called the administration of death. Which is not a bad thing. 
and this is and that continues on in the next verses here so so truly righteousness would have been by Torah so righteousness comes through the atoning work of Messiah you put on his righteousness it's not your own but from there on you're to walk out that righteousness by keeping all the ways of the Father. But the Scripture has shut up all mankind under sin. That's this Torah of, of death, this administration of death. It shut us all up under sin before the, before the Messiah came. And, uh, and, and so there's, when you look at, like, faith through the law, then it causes death. But when you have faith in the promise, which is the promise given to Abraham, Abraham had this faith in the promise, and so it was accounted to him for righteousness. The righteousness that the Messiah would one day obtain on the cross on the stake so then <clears throat> this righteousness it was it was always provided because it was always there it was it was always going to be there it's just now that instead of looking to the cross the stake we look back but it it it's the same for all mankind, for all time, for all ages. So, <clears throat> the scripture shut up all under sin, that the promise by belief in, in Yahshua Messiah might be given to those who believe. <clears throat> so, for those who believe, this promise is to be is to be given might be given but before belief came we were guarded under the law so before messiah came we're guarded under the law the law told us what to do what not to do but before belief came we were guarded under the law having been shut up for the belief being about to be revealed. So, so it was that belief was, was shut off in the sense that Messiah hadn't come yet and it hadn't been revealed uh, to everyone, to all. But those who had belief that it would be accounted to them as righteousness as it was in Abraham. Therefore, the law became our trainer, the Torah became our trainer or tutor unto Messiah in order to be declared right by belief, by faith. After the belief or faith has come, we are no longer under a trainer. So this is another verse that's commonly used that says, well, we're the, the law is a tutor and now we're no longer under a tutor, so we're no longer under the law. So we no longer keep the law. No, nope, that's, that's not the first century definition that Paul's got in his mind. Because the one thing that is immutable in Paul's mind is that the law is the law. And he says it in Acts. He says that that he believes all things written in the law and the prophets. But we don't. So that tells us that we don't have the same faith as Paul overall in this modern age. So the Torah became our tutor unto Messiah in order to be declared right by belief. And after belief has come, we are no longer under a tutor, a trainer. So the law, it led, it was to lead people 
to the understanding that they need a savior, that they need a deliverer because this sin has them bound up, has us bound up in a situation that we can't get out of on our own. Okay? So it it draws to Messiah. But once belief in Messiah comes to an individual, then you're no longer under that tutor because the because it's done its job. The Messiah has come into your life. For as many of you as were immersed into Messiah have put on Messiah. So this is this is the end result of this. That you no longer need this trainer because you no longer need this this tutor to to bring you to Messiah for as many of you are immersed in the Messiah, put on Messiah. So when you put on Messiah in this immersion, and then you continue to walk as he walked, now that you have put this on, you don't need to be led to this because you already have this. And that's what Paul is saying here about the tutor about the law being a tutor. There is not Yehudi, Jew, nor Greek. There is not slave nor free. There is not male nor female. For you're all in Messiah Yeshua. People will say, well, you know, those that's for the Jews. You know, I'm a Gentile. No, there's, there's no Jew. There's no Greek in Messiah. And in the first century, in Acts, Acts 21, it says that there are myriads of Jews. This is like the same word used in the Greek Septuagint when it says that that uh, David slayed his ten thousands. The same word used, myriads. So there's tens of thousands of Jews in the first century who believed. And this flies in the face of, oh, well, the Jews didn't believe, so they got set aside. Well, they did believe many of them and and we are those who are grafted into them as it says in uh, was it Romans 11 that we're grafted in to the cultivated olive tree the cultivated olive tree the olive tree is Israel the cultivated olive tree is those that are believing Israel, those Jews, the tens of thousands of them in the first century, believed in Messiah. And if you are of Messiah, then you are the seed of Abraham and heirs according to the promise. Psalm 89, 34, my covenant, I will not break nor alter the word that has gone out of my lips. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up comments below comment down below if you have a comment of opposition comments of opposition are welcome just don't say anything dumb like we're not under the law we're under grace because you've been taught to use that verse outside of the bounds of its intended context subscribe now hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so that you get notifications of all future videos